Today we're going to be going over how to make a collapsible and an expandable sidebar that has a working search box. Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of DevDrawer. Today we're going to be building out a sidebar um, where basically you can hit like the minimize and it minimizes the down, but still you can still see the icons on the left side. Um, this is going to be a pretty simple, uh, not involved, it's just going to be using JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, just for a reference, I created an images folder and I have these three images inside of it, which is just basically like, you know, a sample avatar, um, the dev drawer logo, as well as a small uh, version of the logo in SVG format. Uh, so these are going to be used inside of my project, but of course, you know, you would use your own images in your case, but I'll keep a copy of these inside of the GitHub that I put up there. But let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we want to do is our HTML5, and we're just going to call this page, uh, let's say, collapse, expand, sidebar, tutorial. <clears throat> All right, so inside of our file structure over here, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it SAS. And then inside of this, we're going to create a new file called style.scss. And then this is going to generate our CSS folder for us. So we'll just leave that one as it is. And then we're also going to create a new folder for JS. And then inside of this, we're going to create a new file called init.js. So in our HTML, I want to reference those as well. So let's first start with the style sheet. So link rail equals style sheet. And then href equals, we're going to do uh, CSS because it will be generated. So let's go ahead and generate that after this. Okay, so inside of our SAS, let's watch our SAS. And now you can see that we have our CSS style. And let me do make sure it's the style.min. Okay. So let me pull this down a little bit. Okay, so now we kind of have the basic structure. Oh, I forgot to add the JavaScript at the bottom. So let's come over here and do script uh, source equals, we're gonna do JS init JS. Okay, so now we have the files that we need included in our HTML. Okay, I'm just going to minimize my sidebar. Um, this is kind of what we're gonna be doing in the tutorial, so creating a little minimize that shows icons. So just notice that. Um, okay, so inside of this, we're just gonna just build out the HTML right now. Um, and we're not gonna be using uh, Bootstrap or anything like that. Uh, everything's gonna be custom CSS. However, I do want to use the Bootstrap icons. So I'm going to copy that from um, another project and I'm just going to paste it right here. You can just go to, you know, bootstrap icons or, you know, Google it to get this CSS or you can just copy my code. But um, essentially this is just going to be used for the icons that is presented. All right, so let's do div container. And then inside of that, we want to do div sidebar. Um, and then on the other side of our sidebar, we want to have um, some content. So let's do div.main. And this sidebar is going to be what actually controls our side on the side. And then the main is going to be what controls the content. Um, so yeah, the main for right now, I'm not going to have anything in it. So I'm just going to put something like page content here. So we're mainly focusing on the sidebar and the implementation of the sidebar and the dynamic um, collapse and expand functionality of it. Okay, so 
first thing I want to do is I want to build out the navigation where the logo is going to go and all that kind of stuff. So up here I'm going to do div and I want to do sidebar top for this um, because it's going to contain the logo um, as well as the little list icon that shows them that they can click on it and minimize it. So inside of this let's do a div class um, let's call it logo and then I want to reference the, uh, the logo that I have in my images folder. So images uh, logo dot png and let's just throw in an alt tag that's blank. Alright and the logo that I have you can't see it over here just because it is a white logo um, but we're going to fix all of that when we go to start working on the class. Okay, so we got our logo, and then let's go ahead, I'm gonna copy this over, because I also wanna have my mobile logo up here. So let's do logo-mobile, and then this is going to be um, mobile.svg, which will reflect the images that I have here. So logo.png, mobile.svg. All right, and then finally, I want to have a div class menu and then this is simply going to have the um, the icon so we're going to do i class equals bi list which is a uh, bootstrap icon um, I think I need to have bi bi list there it is okay so uh, right now that SVG logo is pretty big so let's go ahead and create some SAS that will um, hide that um, let's see so I want to use open sans so I'm just going to import uh, the Google font for open sans um, you can use that however you want to use it and I'm gonna go ahead and start declaring some variables so let's do a primary color and this is just going to be uh, kind of like an off black kind of grayish color and then another one for white and it's just going to be the white color so let's go ahead and get that um, what was it um, logo mobile hidden so I want to just kind of contain everything so we have everything inside of a container and then I have the next part in a sidebar and then the next part in a sidebar top and then finally in here um, I'm going to put the logo mobile and we're going to do display none okay so now we can work a little bit better with what we have um, so let's go ahead and go back to our container and we're going to do display flex and then we're going to do flex flow and this is going to be row wrap so now we have our page content on the right and our uh, header or our sidebar on the left okay so for the sidebar I want to do background dash color so now we can kind of see how it's uh, coming together a little bit. Um, so let's do color. Let's just make it the white color. And we're going to set our width for our sidebar at 20%. And then our height, we're going to make it 100%. Uh, let's also add some padding. So we're going to do uh, zero and then one REM so we have some padding on the left and the right uh, we don't necessarily need it on the top um, okay so let's do our position we're gonna make this be fixed so that way it stretches all the way down to the bottom and just for positioning itself let's do top equals zero left zero 
Okay, so now coming back up, let's go back and create something for our body because you know we have a little bit of work over here that we can do. So let's create a body class or a body uh, style. Um, and then the color for this is going to be, uh, let's do primary color. We're gonna do padding zero, margin zero. And the position for this is gonna be relative, so our fixed stays within the position of our body. And we're gonna do mend height, and this is gonna be 100 vertical height. And let's just go ahead and do our overflow hidden. And let's do our font family, make it equal to the open sans. So open sans, sans serif. And then finally, I'm just gonna make my font size 14 pixels. So we can use that as our REM in the future. Okay, so now we have our sidebar set up. So let's get our logo, um, mobile, our logo inside of the sidebar top set up. So uh, inside of our sidebar top, before we get there, we need to make it where the logo will be on the left and the little icon will be on the right. So we need to set up some flex properties. So let's do display flex. And then we're going to do flex direction is going to be row. And we're going to do justify content space between. So for justify content space between. Um, and then let's do align items. And we're going to do, I think it's a flex start. Okay, so it's getting better. And let's do padding top one REM. So padding. All right, and let's see. Let's go ahead and just make the sidebar top. Uh, let's do height of uh, 55 pixels. Okay, so now we can start working on the logo part. And we're going to do width 50%. And let's see, the image itself inside of our logo class is gonna be height auto and width 100%. There we go. Um, let me zoom in on this because it's a little bit small. Why is it a little bit small? 50% here. Um, let's see what happens when we change this. All right. It's a little bit better, but it's still kind of small. Maybe I got this thing zoomed in or zoomed out. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's it. Oh, it's because I have the screen kind of small. So let me actually zoom in a little bit. All right, now let's come back over here and make this 50% and see what it does. It's still a little too small. So let's just increase it back here and I'm going to reset this. Um, it's because I have, you know, my my screen is kind of smooshed together right now. So uh, it just looks smaller than it actually is uh, just because it's easier to record this way with the dual screen set up for you guys. Um, okay, so I think that's, you know, how it needs to be. But you can play around with it to, uh, you know, to make it however you want it to be on yours. Okay, so we got our logo done. So let's do uh, menu. And then this width is going to be 20%. And text align, we're just gonna have it go to the end. And then the, uh, the actual icon itself, you wanna have cursor, pointer, and then let's increase the font size of it to 1.75 rem give it a little bit of uh, weight so now when you hover over you got the little uh, cursor pointer over here okay so now that's kind of the, the the basis of what we're wanting to do so essentially they're going to click on this and it's going to remove everything on the left and just show the icon so let's go ahead and build out the list items that are below it 
and this is going to be actually inside of a nav for us. Um, so let's stay inside the container, inside the sidebar, and now let's create a nav menu. And let's do a UL and an LI um, times, uh, I don't know, let's just do um, five. And then inside of that, I want to have a a i dot uh, bi dash because we're gonna have these icons, and then let's see if this works. I don't think it's gonna work. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to let's just go ahead and take all of these. And we're just going to add that. So now for the BI, we're going to add those depending on what the actual uh, link is. Um, so inside of the link, I want to have some text inside of it. Uh, the text will. Uh, wait, I just noticed that it's pushing up into the sidebar top which I don't want to have it in the sidebar top. We need to move it down outside of that div so it comes below it, okay. Um, so I want to have a, let's see, I want to have something here that represents um, the text that's going to be in it. So we're going to do span uh, dot text for each one of these. And this is going to be what the actual like names of them are going to be. So the first one is going to be dashboard, and then our other text here is going to be pages. Um, let's say like post users, and finally let's do something like settings. So of course these you know URLs aren't going anywhere. Um, they're just going to be there to look pretty. Uh, but we're focusing on the the, the JavaScript and the CSS part of it. This is just kind of filler fluff. Um, okay, so for a dashboard, we have the bootstrap icon speedometer. So speedometer. Did I spell that right? Speed speedometer. There we go. Okay, so now we have our little uh, icon over there. All right, so we'll clean it up in a little bit. So let's do the next one. It's going to be bi file earmark for our pages. Um, and then over here, uh, let's do bi dash pencil dash square for our post. And then for our users, I'm going to do bi dash people and then finally for our settings we're going to do bi dash gear okay so now we have all of our icons here so let's come over to our styles and make that a little pretty as well so we can get out of the sidebar top and we can start working on the uh, the navigation so let's do nav and then inside of this we're going to do ul and then li. Uh, for the ul itself, we're going to do padding zero, margin zero, and then list style none. So it gets rid of the little dots for us. And then inside of this uh, li tag, we're going to do display block. We're going to do align items center padding. Uh, let's see, 1.25 REM. Try to keep that standard throughout uh, the site. All right, so it's getting better. Um, actually, while I'm inside of this, let me uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and take the A just to make it a little bit easier to read right now. Let's do display block. So, display block and. Um, Trying to look to see if there's any other place in my original code where I modify the A. Um, okay, so let's do A. Um, 
Let's set the color for uh, white. Just makes it a little bit easier for us to read it. Okay. Um, and then inside of this, we have our icon. And we're going to do font size 1.25 REM just to give them a little bit of uh, weight. And then our text. Let's do a position uh, relative. I'm trying to get it moved over a little bit. Uh, let's do left one REM and I need to move it up a little bit as well so let's do top like negative 0.25 REM alright that looks a little bit better so let's do over on our links we're going to do tech, uh, text decoration none so get rid of that underline now I think these are lining up pretty good maybe a little bit too high so if we do maybe 0.20 okay that looks like they're centered over there uh, for my screen it kind of it kind of looks like they're centered inside of it so that's kind of what I'm looking for okay so now I want to add a few different properties to our list over here um, so let's do position relative and then our background color I want to make it transparent because we're going to be uh, we're going to be using it on on hover in a in a whenever you go to hover over it or whenever you go to have it selected it's going to show a different uh, like a background on top of the hover so for right now I just want to have it uh, transparent and then let's go ahead and add a transition to the background so let's do background color uh, let's just make it happen really really quick and then we're going to do ease in and out okay so now we have this uh, which currently it isn't doing anything on hover which is fine that's you know we can we can deal with that in a little bit but essentially I just want to build out the structure right now um, okay so I want to also add a search uh, right above the dashboard so let's come up a little bit and we're going to create a new class here so let's do div class search and then we're just going to have a form action that does nothing because you know it's a sample so we don't need it to do anything and then we're going to have button type equals submit and let's just say class equals call search. So the reason why I'm calling this call search is because we're going to use it um, whenever the screen is minimized, the button will turn into like a, um, like a magnifying glass. And then that magnifying glass, whenever they click on it, it'll show like a full screen pop-up of the search because the, you know, the search bar itself will no longer exist. Okay, so let's do I want to add that icon so let's do I class equals BI BI search and then the buttons good so let's add our input now so we're going to do input type equals text and let's add a placeholder equals um, let's say just search and then this is going to be class equals search input. Okay, so now we have the search uh, where we want it at, but we need to style it. So if we switch up, uh, switch back over to our uh, CSS, let's right above our nav since that's where it is in the HTML. Let's create a class for search, and then. Uh, we're also going to have something inside of it for the button and then something inside of that for the input. Alright, so the search itself, let's do margin top 1 REM and display flex, flex direction equals row. 
and justify content and we're gonna do space between again and then we're going to align items to uh, flex start make it position relative and let's just add a margin um, actually you know what let's do margin uh, one rem zero because we're going to do one on the top and the bottom okay so we're getting there now for our button uh, let's do cursor pointer uh, let's just make it with auto and then background color is going to be transparent and then we're going to do uh, border zero and then let's make the color of it match our white um, okay so now to position it because I want it to be right on top of that search bar so we're going to do position and it's going to be absolute and let's see um, so it's inside of the box now let me make it bigger so I'm going to do font size 1.25 rem and let's make it where it's left 1.5 rem 1.5 rem and the top we're gonna make it 50 percent but then we're gonna do a transform to make it where it's centered inside of that um, search box that we're fixing to do so let's do translate negative 50 percent and negative 50 percent okay so that kind of looks the way we want it to so let's do our input now. So our input, uh, let's do background color, and we're gonna do a lighten of the primary color. So primary color. And let's just say, so comma five, five percent, okay? All right, so let's do a zero border on it as well. Padding, let's give it one rim padding. Give it a border radius as well. And let's just make this a 0.5 REM. All right, so it's looking better, looking better. Um, and then let's do the width. We're gonna do a calculation on this. So we're gonna do calculate 100% uh, minus one REM since that's the padding that we gave it. And then also, let's add the placeholder. So placeholder here, and let's do padding left 1.5 rem. All right, let's see how that looks. Um, looks good, but it's a little pushed off to the side. Why is it pushed off to the side? So I wonder if I can do two rem. Okay, that's better. I mean, it's a really squished sidebar over here. I mean, I think it's fine. I'm just, uh, if the screen was bigger, it'd probably look a little bit better. Um, but, you know, whenever you're doing it on yours, obviously you won't be working with the constraint that I am of the, you know, the 1080p for dual screen uh, views. So your screen could be a little bit bigger and it would probably make a little bit more sense to have this thing stretched out. You know, 20% would probably work out a lot better on a much wider screen. Uh, but right now, you know, 20% is kind of squished over here. Uh, yours won't necessarily look like that. You know, you can fix it however you want to fix it. But, you know, in theory, this should work um, on a bigger screen. Um, okay. So everything seems to be working good. I want to also add at the bottom over here, I want to add like an account section. So I'm going to go back to my... Uh, my indexed HTML, then underneath the uh, nav, I'm going to do div class account. Um, and I think that should do that. So div class account, and then we're going to do div class. I want to have the avatar on it. So div class, no, um, div class avatar. And then I also want to have where it displays a name. So div name, 
and then finally I want to have the logout button which will be an icon so div dot logout um, I could probably go ahead and inside of this one do href uh, let's add i class equals bi bi box arrow left kind of represent a logout for us okay and I want to change this so the sidebar instead of having just the I want to have some of this copied as like a general rule on the sidebar not just in the nav so let me move this up to let's just stay let's put it right here I just essentially want just the color white to be and the text decoration um, so I can go down here into our um, a inside of the nav itself and remove that so I just wanted to have the the icon look a little bit better there uh, without having to do the code multiple times okay so let's say inside of our name we're gonna have an h4 and my login name for this thing would be the dev drawer and my title I guess would be administrator okay, I spelled that completely wrong okay now I want to have an avatar that is going to be the image uh, so it's going to be images uh, avatar jpeg let's just add a blank alt tag and that should be good there so now let's go over to our styles and let's try to make this look nicer um, okay so we have our nav here um, right below this I'm going to add a account and inside of this we have the avatar and we also have name and then logout okay so I want it to be kind of stacked up um, so let's do the account is going to be display flex um, and actually while I am in here just because that avatar image is huge let's go inside of our avatar image and make it a border radius 50% uh, let's do height of 50 pixels and a width of 50 pixels. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier to look at while we're working. Okay, so let's do justify content. We're going to make it space, be uh, space between again. And then we're going to do align content center. We're going to do align um, items center and that's looking a little bit better so let's say we're gonna do let's set up the width of this kind of the same way we did the width of the search bar so we're gonna do calculation equals 100% minus 2 rem to account for the padding all right it's looking good and let's do position we're going to make it absolute positioned and bottom zero. So it should push it all the way down to the bottom. Okay, good. Looking good. All right, so now we have our avatar. Uh, let's add some spacing on it. So we're going to do margin uh, dash right. And then it's going to be one REM. And we're going to set its width up to 20%. Um, okay, so now we have our name. So inside of this, it's I want to control the H4 on it. So let's do H4, and this is going to be padding zero, margin zero, so that it's sitting right on top of its title. And then I want to have this also be flex one one auto. So it's pushing all the way across. Um, you know what? 
I am getting really, really annoyed with the compression of this right now. So I'm going to set my sidebar width to 30%. Makes it a little bit easier to work with over here. And then my... Um, I don't even have anything coded for the main yet. Okay, so just to make it a little bit easier to read and to line up everything. Okay, so back to where I was. So flex 1, 1 auto now for our logout. I want to have... Uh, it also do the same thing, so flex one one auto, and then we're going to do text align, and this is going to be end, and then the icon I want it to be font size one point five rem. Okay, it's looking a little bit better. Now I want to. I feel like it's a little too close down there. So I wonder if I could do bottom one REM instead of zero. Oh, yeah, that looks much better. Okay, so now it's kind of coming together. It kind of looks like you know a normal administrative menu that you may have seen before. Okay, so now I don't know if you remember, but in the very beginning of the tutorial, we add some text in our main. Currently, it's sitting behind this. Uh, because this is like a fixed position so what we need to do is account for that so after our account we're gonna do uh, dot main and then we're gonna do margin left and we're gonna do a calculation and originally I had it at 20% but I changed it to 30% and then plus 2 REM for the padding on it and then let's do padding one REM. Um, why is it still not showing? Let me inspect this to see where it's actually putting it at. So main is right there, but div class main. Um, it's inside the container. Oh, that's because I'm still inside the sidebar. Okay, so let's take it out one more and go here and just keep it inside the container. All right, there we go, that looks a little bit better. Um, so let's do two REM instead of one, perfect. All right, so now we have our page content and our sidebar on the side. So that is what I am looking for. Now, I need to start working on the JavaScript, so let's open up our JavaScript over here. Inside of our HTML, we have um, all of this stuff. What we essentially wanna do is add a class to our body whenever that menu item is clicked. So the first thing I want to do inside of the JavaScript is let's create a constant uh, called menu and it's going to equal to document dot query selector uh, because there's only one of them so uh, I think it's dot menu is what we called it over here I believe so dot menu here all right um, and then this constant, we're going to add an event listener to it. So menu dot add event listener, and we're going to be listening for the click event. And then we're going to pass our function, and just to make it clean, I'm going to create some additional functions. So the first function I want to create is let's say function expand sidebar. And inside of this function, we want to toggle the body uh, short or not. If it's short, then we want the menu over here to short. If it's not, then we want it to not be short. So let's first turn that on. So document dot query selector, and then it's going to be body. And then we're just going to do class list dot toggle and short. So now we have our, you know, basically when we click on this, we want to have it run the expand sidebar function. And just to test that that's working, if we go over here to inspect on our body, if we click on this, it adds the body class short. So once it adds the body class short, we want it to do some other things. Um, so in order to test this, we need to go to our style.scs and 
And here we're going to do dot short. And then we're going to control some of the things that it does. So our sidebar is going to become smaller. So we want to say like width of, um, let's try 5% to start with. So 5%. And then we also want to have the items inside of our sidebar. We want them to be text align center. Um, so there is some things that I don't want to show. Uh, like, for example, I don't want the text to show. I don't want the search bar itself to show. I also don't want the avatar to show or the, you know, the name that's associated with it. So we're going to take those classes and we're just going to turn them off. So let's do logo search input which is the actual input for the search bar the text and the avatar and finally the name we want it to be display none okay so now if we run this it's kind of sort of working so I mean it's not completely clean right now but you can kind of see what we're what we're getting at over here I mean it decreases and expands um, as it needs to. So I think that looks pretty good. So now we just gotta clean it up a little bit. Um, so over here, I want it to display this in a better way. So let's do sidebar top. We're gonna have it display block. Uh, let's say the height is going to be 75 pixels. Um, for the logo mobile, we still want it to, um, actually, no, we don't need to do that on here yet, do we? Uh, I was going to make it display none. I'm just going to set it to display none uh, anyway. Um, I don't think it's required because we have it set as display none at the top, but uh, I'm just going to leave that on there because I think whenever we go to use the JavaScript, it's going to change it a certain way, and I want it to display only on the mobile version. Um, so the desktop version, the way it is right now, um, I don't want it to display there at all. Um, okay, so width for the menu is going to be 100%. And then text align center. Okay, so now if we come over here, we hit this, it centered it up. It looks a little bit better. I mean, we still have some spacing issues over here. And then we also need to do our um, um, account logout. Let's go ahead and do that while I'm here. So we have, uh, basically I'm gonna take this, copy it down, and this is going to be, instead of sidebar top, it's going to be account. And we don't need to have a height on there. And let's take these away. So it's gonna be a display block, and then our logout is going to be um, the same thing we have here for our menu because it's essentially the same kind of icon. So now if we do this, um, it's not uh, account, I need to spell that correctly. Okay, click on it again, there we go. Now it's lining up everything, it looks like it's centered. Uh, the search bar is a little off, but we can adjust that. Um, okay, so one thing I wanna do is, so I don't have to keep uh, you know, pushing it down you know, every single time I make a change, I want to add something in here that keeps that state for us. So inside of our expand search bar, we are going to um, create a variable. Let's do let keep sidebar. And this is going to be equal to document uh, dot query selector all and body short actually I don't think I need to have query selector all there query selector and let's do if uh, keep sidebar dot length equals one we want to add a local storage so local storage dot set item keep sidebar and then we're just going to pass uh, let's do a string true uh, else instead of set item we're going to come over here and do remove item 
and we don't need the true any longer. Okay, so now we should be able to set a, um, a lo local storage item. So if we click on this, Oh, wait, maybe I do need the all. No? Hmm. Okay, well, I was playing around with it. Um, there's nothing wrong with the code. Um, for some reason, it just wasn't showing. So if I refresh this um, now, if I refresh it, it's there. So I don't know, maybe I just wasn't refreshing it at the right time. Should be removed now. So maybe I was expanding it out and in. Um, anyway, uh, the application key is being set um, the way I want it to. So that's good. Now let's create another function. Um, so let's do down here, we're gonna do function show stored sidebar and if it is uh, set we want to keep it where it shows um, or adds the body short so we're going to do if local storage dot get item keep sidebar if this is equal to true because we did set it as a string. Actually, you know what? Let's take that away. Let's just make it a variable or a boolean. Um, okay, so if it is equal to true, we want to um, kind of take this, but we don't want to do toggle. We want to do add. So if we toggle this now and we refresh it, oh wait, we gotta have it where it calls this. So at the top, um, where we wanna have this at? When the page loads, we don't want it to be on click. Whenever the page loads, we want it to show that. Um, all right, let me see. Application, refresh that. So show stored sidebar. This should be hitting it there. Let me just make sure that it's hitting it. So console.log here. Application refresh. So it should be should be hitting that. Maybe I do need to keep this as a string. Okay, yeah, I had to keep it as a string. So let's keep that as a string. But right now, whenever the page loads, if it's stored in our application to keep sidebar, um, it'll keep it. If it's not, it won't. So now we can refresh and we can see all of our changes without having to go and you know click the button every single time. Okay, um, so now let's go back up to our styles and let's control this a little bit more. So we have our sidebar top, the menu, um, account um, let's do the search now so search we're gonna do margin uh, 1.75 rem and 0 give it a little spacing around the search bar and then we need to take our main and move it over as well so let me make sure I get outside of the sidebar let's do main we're going to do margin left, calculate, and it's going to be 5%, um, and then plus 2 REM, because we set our width up here to 5%, so now it's 5% from the left, doing this, this. Okay, so one thing I want to do on this is to make it where it's a little bit um, cleaner looking whenever it resizes. So I'm gonna go back up to my sidebar over here 
and I'm going to do a transition. So let's do a transition. And let's say I want the width to transition relatively quick. We're going to do ease in out. There we go. So now it kind of expands where it's not so robot looking. It's a little more fluid. But I like how that expands. So this uh, search bar right here is still kind of weird. So let's see what we can do to the style over here. Um, so the call search, search button. Uh, let's see. Why is the search itself not centered? Is it centered? I can't tell. That is, but the button itself is not centered. No, I don't want it to do that. I'm pretty sure I want it to do this. Hmm. All right, well, we'll come back to that. I mean, it's a little off to the side, but uh, that's not what I'm particularly worried about right now. What I want to do is whenever you hover over these icons with the, uh, the menu down, I want it to be able to show this text. So we put those in a class for a reason. So I want to be able to show that text. So let's go back over to our initialized JS. And I think uh, right below the expand search bar, I'm going to do another function. It's going to be called show hover. And then inside of this, we're going to do const li equals document dot query selector all and we're only going to grab if it's the short so short sidebar li a so we want to check to make sure that this is uh, visible so we're going to do li dot length is greater than zero we want to do li dot for each and then we're going to do function item and then the item dot add event listener we're going to do a mouse over so mouse over function and inside of this mouse over we're going to take the text so we're going to create a variable called uh, text and that's going to equal to item dot query selector and we're just going to pass text and then we're going to do text dot class list dot add and we're just going to add a hover class to it so I also want to do the same thing for mouse out so let's come down here and do instead of mouse over we're going to do mouse out and this is all good so class list add we're going to now remove that class list so whenever we hover over these if we inspect it whenever we hover over oh wait we need to call this so on show hover so let's just go ahead and put that inside of our event listener and inside of our show stored sidebar All right, so now you can see, you know, the text down here. If we hover over it, it adds a hover class to it. So inside of our style.scss, let's add a uh, text hover. So let's go down to our uh, short sidebar, and then right above this, we're going to do dot text dot hover, and I want to do display uh, block. And let's just make this important. Okay, so now whenever we hover over it, it's showing the text that we want, but it's not showing it in the right place yet. So I want to make it where it kind of comes out to the side. So let's start coding for that. So we're going to do display. Let's do a background color 
uh, RGBA, and let's make it white. Uh, that's kind of transparent. And the color itself will be primary. Let's add some padding, so 0.5 REM. And now we're getting there. Okay. So padding REM. Uh, let's also add a box shadow to it. So a box shadow. And we're going to do one pixel, one, one pixel. Let's give it a blur of five pixels. Don't need it to really stand out. And then let's do RG. Be a, a little bit of a black color with the transparency on it. Okay. And then let's do uh, position uh, absolute left three rem. Let's see how that looks. Okay, it's getting there. And now let's do a top of one rem. Okay, so now if we come over here, you know, the hover doesn't stay, but it does show up over here. Um, let me add a border radius to it as well. So border radius, and let's just say uh, 0.25 REM for the border radius. Gives it a little bit of a corner on it. There we go. All right, so that's looking good. Um, I don't necessarily like that it's white on top of white, so let's come over here inside of our body and do I want to do it in the body or the main? Um, hmm. Actually, you know what? I think that'll be fine. I'm just looking in my other code. So yeah, I think it'll be fine. I mean, it's it's legible. So if you wanted to, you can come over to the body and you know do something like. Uh, I don't know, background, color, blue. And it'll make it where it's, you know, more legible. But I think it's, even with the the white background, because it has the, uh, the drop shadow behind it, I think that works out pretty good. So now I want to fix the alignment on this. So let's scroll down. Go to our sidebar, search, and let's add some margin over here. So let's do like a negative 0.2 REM. All right, so that seemed to line it up with it. It looks like it's lined up to me, um, but it looks pretty straight. Okay, so if we expand it out. Okay, it's looking good. So I think for the most part the project is done outside of the search bar functionality. So what I want to do is whenever you click on this, it um, expands out this search bar. So let's go back to our initialized JS and we are going to create a new function right above this. And we're going to call it, uh, sh um, let's see, git search so our git search is going to be uh, let me see let me go ahead and expand this out so it doesn't keep flipping back and forth on me okay so the git search is we're going to do document dot query selector and it's going to be call search because that's what our button name is and we're going to do add event listener click and let's go ahead and write the function for that and we want to pass the um, the event for this function so that we can prevent it from um, doing its default action so let's do e dot prevent default action or e prevent default and then inside of this we're going to do if document dot query selector and this is going to be 
uh, we're looking at the body because we want to make sure that it's in the short. So we're going to do class list dot contains uh, short. And this is the only time we want it to run this if statement. So if it can, the body contains short, we want to be able to toggle on and off a search window. So let's do document. So document dot query selector and I think I need to create this div search window dot class list dot toggle active. Okay, so let's come over to our index.html and we're just going to scroll all the way down to the bottom um, outside of our container div and we're going to create a div class equals search window and then for this we're going to have a cancel button a and then a form so let's do the first one is going to be button type equals button because we don't want this button to potentially submit the form. And it's going to be class equals, uh, let's see, cancel search. And then inside of this, it's just going to be i class equals bi uh, bi dash x. That's just the times uh, button. So you can't see it because it's hidden over here, but that's fine. We'll uh, get this to pop up in just a moment. All right, so now let's do h2 search our site. Now let's do forum action. And right now it's just not going to do anything. You can handle this part on your own. text placeholder equals enter your text and then we want to have a button type equals submit search okay so now let's style that so that it actually works uh, with what we want it to do so let's get outside of our container we're going to create a search window and inside of this search window uh, we just basically want to do position uh, fixed height 100 vertical height uh, width 100 vertical width and let's give it a semi transparent background so background color uh, let's do RGBA uh, 51, 51, 51, 9. Okay. And let's do Z index of 1 so that it appears above everything else. And let's set it to the top as 0. So it goes all the way to the top. All right. And let's add some padding, 1 REM. Uh, let's center everything. Uh, let's also make the color uh, use the white color. Uh, let's add some padding to it. So padding top. Uh, let's say what I want to do here. Let's do 20 vertical height. Okay. All right. Um, and then let's style the input. So the input. Uh, let's do background color, and we're going to do darken. Uh, let's darken the white color and let's make it darken by 25%. Okay. Do our border zero pixels. Padding. Uh, let's do 1 REM and 0.5 REM. Uh, let's also do a border radius. Uh, let's see, I want to do 0.5 REM on this so it kind of sticks out with the other ones that we've done. Let's do width of 60, vertical width. 
Okay, so far so good. Um, and now let's do the placeholder. And the placeholder, we're just going to do padding left 1.5 REM. And I think it's a little too much. That's 2.5. Okay. All right, so now let's style the buttons. So down here, let's do button. And let's do the background color transparent. Uh, let's do border two pixels solid white. Font size. Do one REM padding one REM two REM. Okay, it is getting there. And let's just make the cursor a pointer as well. And now for the cancel search, we don't want it to look like that, obviously. Actually, I need to do color white on the button as well okay looking better okay so background dash color now oh, we already got a transparent background color for that so that's fine let's do border zero pixels uh, font size let's go with two rem for this one and then we're going to absolutely position it and then we're going to do top zero, right two vertical width. Vertical width. All right, so now we have this and this. So do I want to leave the search button squared off like that? No, I don't. Okay, so let's do border radius. And I think the other ones are 5 REM. Okay, looks a little bit cleaner there. Um, okay, so we have our search the way that we want it. So let's go ahead and now turn it off. Because we want it to only appear whenever that active is available. So now if we come down here underneath our button and we do and active display block so if we shrink that down and click on this it's not doing anything right now uh, that's because we got to call the function so inside of our in, in JS let's go up to here so we get search now still isn't displaying it because it is looking inside of the uh, showed stored show stored sidebar so now if we try it there we go okay so we need to create the action that happens whenever um, here inside of the whenever we click on the cancel we want it to um, cancel it okay so let's come down here we're gonna do document dot query selector and let's do cancel search dot add event listener and we're going to do the click event for that then function and again we're going to be passing the e no we don't need e on this one because it's a button it doesn't have a default action and then we're just going to do document and we could probably just copy this over so search window class list toggle active okay so now if we hit this and we hit that it makes it go away and if we come over here and we hit this it shouldn't do anything because this is actually going to be you know your button for a form submission um, so you don't need that window to pop up 
Now I'm not a fan of how that looks. I think because we increased the width of it. So let's go back over here to our search. And where's our width? Add search input width. Let's put this back down to one REM like I initially had it. No? Hmm. If we do a plus there. Okay. All right, so looks like it works. Um, now I know it's probably gonna be looking weird on mobile, so we'll get to the mobile in just a second. But I just wanna show you this. So right now, if we you know load the page, it automatically goes into that view. This works. If we have it expanded and we reload the page, it just shows it as the expanded view. So, all right, cool. Um, we'll hover over these, we're good here good here okay so now let me see how difficult it will be to put this thing into um, responsive mode yeah responsive doesn't look great um, so let's try iPad first iPad doesn't look too bad there doesn't look too great there okay so let's play around with I, uh, the iPhone because obviously we're going to want to make some changes to the styles um, we could probably replicate for the most part um, what we're doing inside of our um, short because I mean it's basically going to be the exact same kind of view for it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy uh, the short so let's just go down here and copy this and we can play around with it as we go. Okay, so let's first set up a media breakpoint. Uh, so let's do media and max width of 844 pixels because we have 844. That's the height there. Okay, so let's start with the 390. So we'll come back to the 844 pixels. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna start with this one. So the width of 844 pixels. I'm going to copy this in here, uh, but we don't have short in this instance. Um, so let's just add our container sidebar, and that looks pretty good. So the you know the styles for the most part work the way we want them to so all of this is fine um, but in the logo mobile I want it to display block so it shows that little icon and then let's also set the image here to a height of auto and a width of let's say like 80 percent so it's not as big and bulky up there Okay, so we don't need to limit um, the height on here. Um, so we don't need to limit anything there. Wait, do we? Um, let's do height auto, because I think there's a height that's defined. All right, well, let's set that height Auto. I think I need to have a display block because of the way that it's being handled above. Um, okay. Okay. Just checking. Um, let's see. Text display none. This would be fine. Uh, the menu. Let's go with a display none here because we don't need to have the menu expand on mobile because all the icons need to be visible on mobile. Uh, we also do not need text hover because you can't hover on a phone. Um, we can keep this as it is. Um, the search, we can keep that as it is too. And then the main, this should be fine as well. Um, all right, so let's say when you click on this, nothing happens. So we need to make it where the uh, the search bar works, but what I want to focus on right now is the icons. 
So let's come back up here to sidebar. Uh, let's see. Okay, so inside of our sidebar, I'm going to do a UL li, and then here I'm going to do padding zero. Let's see what that looks like. All right, and inside of the A, let's do a padding uh, 0.55 rem zero. That's too much. Um, so maybe let's try a 25. What happens if I do zero here? So the icons are very spaced out. Why are they spaced out? So if I inspect this, see where the spacing is coming from. Okay, the search doesn't count. So the li has padding, oh, nav li. So let's add a nav here because we need to overwrite the, uh, the code that is happening currently in the style sheet. Um, so we have a nav here, container sidebar, UL, it's a nav UL. Okay, so let's switch these. So we're gonna do nav here, UL here. All right, there we go. Now we can control it. So let's set this to 0.55 REM and zero again. All right, that looks a little bit cleaner. So let's take our search and instead of doing 1.75, what happens if we just change this to one? Still very, they're, they're kind of compressed together. So let's do 1.5. Uh, 1.25 all right and then we can come up here and do let's see what this looks like is 75 I'm trying to get the spacing just right all right that looks pretty good uh, let me push down the search a little bit more so let's do 1.5 okay all right, so that looks pretty good for the uh, the horizontal view of a phone. So let's see what it looks like with the vertical view. All right, so now let's come in here and do the 390. So I'm going to do max width of 390. expand out the width of this a little bit so let's come over here we're going to copy this down again and we're just going to take out the stuff that we don't need um, so first thing I want to do is expand the width so let's say 8% um, maybe okay 8% looks pretty good so that means we also need to come down here to our uh, main and do 8% there okay so that looks good and now the search, I'm going to do, let's see, margin, uh, let's do margin top of 2 REM, and then margin bottom of 1.25 REM. Okay. And then we don't need the account here anymore. That's being brought down from the style above it. Um, we could use this. Do we need to expand that out? Let's see what it looks like expanded out. Let's do 75. All right, let's try two. Give it some more space. All right, that looks pretty good. And then let's see on the sidebar top, we have the mobile here so these it's kind of hard to see looking at the side of my screen um, so the search is not lining up 
where I want it to. So let's do margin dash left zero. No, okay. So let's do negative 0.25 REM. A little bit better. So let's try 0.5. There we go. All right, so now it kind of looks like it's lined up in the center. Um, I want to give it some more spacing on the top, so let's try four over here to kind of make it where it matches the other ones. And then I think maybe we can do four there. No, that's a little too much. Let's try three. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, cool. So um, I don't think we need any of this because it's being translated down. So we can probably get rid of text align center all the way to there. All right, so that looks good. All right, so our style is working on mobile. Cool, all right. Uh, let's see what it's... What is the width of my screen right now? 833, 864. Okay, well that's gonna be an issue because I'm using this small screen and it's hitting this 844. Um, so, let me see. So what is it, 833 by 864. So let's try just, and you could leave the uh, 44. I'm gonna put 32 in here so that it shows what I'm looking at. It's just because, again, I'm using this super thin screen over here so I can show you both the code and the, uh, the, the, the modifications at the same time. So for yours, 844 would be good, but my screen size itself is set to 833. Um, so I'm just gonna change this to 832 on here just so you can kind of see it. Uh, when I actually go to publish out the code, I'll put it on 844 so that you can download the accurate code rather than something that's adhering to my screen. Um, but so far, it looks good. So if we click this, that works. Cool. Now, I'm going to switch this thing back to mobile. And that works, but it doesn't look great. So let's go in here and we get our 390. So I'm gonna come up here and we're going to find the search. Actually, it's not gonna be down here, I don't think. It, yeah, it will. I'm um, going back up, where's that? Here. So we're gonna do search. We're just gonna copy this over and then I'm gonna bring it down. And actually I'm going to, okay, well that one looks good. I don't need to do anything with that one. So when it gets down to this view here, this 390, Let's try to make it look a little bit better. Um, no, it's that's not it, is it? No, that's not it. Where is the search? Here, search window is what I was wanting to copy. I thought it was down at the bottom. Okay, so search window, when it gets down here, I'm gonna have it go ahead and display blocks so we can see the changes that we're doing in real time. Um, so I think what we need to do is take the button and move it down and have the, the input 100%. Uh, so let's do 100% here. And we can get rid of all of this stuff because it does not concern us at the moment. And the cancel search is fine, so we can get rid of that as well. Uh, for this, I think I'm going to do with 100% and we can get rid of this as well because that is not needed okay so now we have height 100 I wonder so position fixed the position fixed is what's gonna be killing us so the width on both of these we need to do a calculation so calculate 100% minus, uh, I think it's gonna be two REM. Nope, uh, let's do 100% minus one REM then. All right, I'm gonna try to do this 
down here for the button as well. That is not working the way I'm expecting it to. So let's see. I'm going to put this back over here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So we have our search here. The calculation is not working. Why is it not working? Okay, now it's working. But it still isn't working the way I'm expecting it to. Um, let's see, this is... Maybe I can do position relative since it's inside of an absolute. Nope. Um, okay. Okay, so I think if we come over here and we take away the padding, that's going to get us closer to what we want. So we don't need any of this stuff. Oh, wait, I do need the display block. So let's take that off. Here. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So what if we do two REM here? All right, and then let's do margin top um, one REM. Okay, I like that. And then I think I'm going to do uh, top, uh, let's say like 10 vertical height. No, margin top maybe. No, padding top. Okay, there we go. All right, I think this is a little too strong. So let's do five. Okay, so now let's put this back where it was. And if we click on this, it shows the site now. So this is picking up if it contains, hmm. okay, so we need to create something that whenever this thing is displayed full and if it's in mobile, it's going to show the click event here. So right now it's not going to do anything because it doesn't have that short class on it. Um, so if I do that and then we go back into inspect, it's going to show it because it has that short class on it. So what we want to do is make it where it shows it regardless. So we need to add a class over there. All right, so let's switch back to our mobile view. And right now when we click on this, nothing happens. So we can come over here into our, um, our JavaScript and we can go and edit it. So let's come over here and we're gonna use window.innerWith. So, or window inner width is less than or equal to 844. We want it to run this. So now if we click on this, it shows that. Come back over here, it shows that. Okay. Cool. All right, so uh, I think that's going to do it for this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, you know, leave me a comment below. I know this was a long tutorial, but it's basically a lot of CSS, um, and the JavaScript isn't too difficult, so you can read through the JavaScript and you know be able to see you know the stuff that's being changed here. But most of the changes that happen are usually you know CSS based, so we had to go in there and kind of code for a few different things. Um, I went ahead and reset this thing back to 8:44 so that my code will be up to date whenever you go to look at it. Uh, but I think that's going to do it for now. So I appreciate you watching, and I will talk to you later.